So, hello, good evening, and welcome everybody to the cinema of the DFF, the German Film Institute and Film Museum. I'm Laura Teixeira, I work here in the cinema department of the DFF, and I'm very happy to be welcoming you to the opening of our uh, second part of this lecture and film series dedicated to Chantal Ackermann's work. Um, we had an amazing uh, winter semester with lovely uh, talks and films. Uh, all the talks from the winter semester are available in our YouTube channel, so you can find them online. And yeah, we have a whole program. I mean, uh, this flyer, for those who have been following the program, you already know it. The, here are all the, um, all the films and all the lectures we're going to have uh, for the summer semester until uh, July. And we also have accompanying programs, so programs or films that we are screening around this main program. And that uh, part of the program you can find in the brochure of the DFF or in our website. So um, also stay tuned for these other films that we are showing around the main uh, program. Um, I am very happy tonight. We're going to have, uh, for this uh, big opening of the summer semester, we have Babette Mongold with us tonight. I'm very happy that she made it all the way from California. Thank you, Babette, for being here. Uh, we're going to have a very special, um, well, um, screening because it's different from what we usually do with uh, the lecture because we decided since Babette is coming all the way here let's also uh, take the chance and show some of her own films and that's what we're going to see now so the first part of the evening let's say is um, dedicated to Babette's work and we're going to be screening three films um, as um, announced we start with uh, what Maisie knew um, uh, and then we continue with um, Steve Pax and Adia, and we finish with uh, staging lateral pass. And all those films have to do with improvisation or with choreography, and Babette will talk more about that after the screening. We're going to have a Q&A here, um, and so you have the chance to ask questions, and uh, she will be able to tell a little bit more about the process of making these films, which represents different uh, stages also of her um, production. Then um, at uh, 8.15 we have the second part of the evening where uh, Babette is going to talk about uh, Chantal Ackermann's relationship to music and uh, as in a kind of preparation for the screening of the documentary uh, Un jour Pina a demandé, uh, One day Pina asked, that we're going to screen um, and then have uh, also the chance to ask questions afterwards. So it's going to be a long evening, uh, so I don't. I want to make this short. Um, and I would like to thank um, everybody that made this uh, evening possible, my colleagues here at the DFF and also uh, Professor Vincent Schrediger, who has curated and prepared this whole series and will be uh, conducting the Q&A and the talk with Babette Mangold later. And of course, the University, uh, Goethe University of Frankfurt, the Excellence Cluster Normative Orders, the Hessische Film und Medien Akademie, the city of Frankfurt, and everybody that has helped us make this uh, program possible. So enjoy the screening, and like I said, after the film, we'll have QA with Babette Mangold. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you. So basically, it's it's an art program, you know. The program was done here, so. But I wanted to show staging lateral pass because first I love Trisha Brown uh, choreography, but uh, it's a film which was made uh, haphazardly because I had the uh, uh, bed ISP camera in '85 only when the HP uh, the public uh, radio uh, television and television station in Minneapolis did not need the camera, so I had it, uh, you know, one day and not another day. So there's nothing I could plan really to shoot. I was I was always on the set looking at the dancer moving, but I could shoot only when I had that camera. There was I had my steel camera, and I was shooting black and white, and I tried to do color because the color was so important in the Nancy Grave uh, set and in the costume. And the color was not up to par to shoot movement as fast as Trisha Brown dancer uh, in 85. So I did not have really good slide in color, which was the only thing I could use then. So my black and white photographs are pretty good, but the color was really important. And I say on film, you always have color. And even if it's bad ISP, and I knew how to use the camera because I shot a documentary in 1982 for like uh, three months in uh, Malaysia on, with bad ISP, you know, the tropic and video, it's really complicated. So I knew how to use the camera. <laughs> 
So I took notes of what I was shooting and I said, we don't have the money to do a copy, to do a, a, a rough cut at the time. So we, Trisha kept the footage. And it's only because Nancy Grave had the retrospective at the Ludwig Museum in uh, Aachen that the money was found to actually did an upgrade in HD of the footage shot in Beta SP and I could edit, a, edit the material. 30, so, 30 years later. Yeah, yeah, 30 years later on my note and on my... I, I never saw the final production, production I left before, so I saw... Uh, video capture of it later on but uh, it's very rare to do a film on the work of dancer before and not finishing with the final production you know so but I love the theater world then <laughs> and uh, and it's here it was theater because of the set but it was essentially dance and the complication was the set was really dangerous if they were eating it and and obviously the movement that was very those those dancers was extremely trained so they could measure the space and readjust but it, it demanded some uh, attempt so what you could see is you know people marking the dance and also doing the dance you know but the solo of trisha is <laughs> it's incredible yeah. <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. The microphone's on the way to you. Oh. oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you just talked about measuring uh, space. As I was watching the film, um, I was thinking about something uh, basically from your biography, because if, before you went to film school, you were in a first degree in mathematics. Yeah, I have a BA in math. Right, you're a mathematician. How I, mean, I never, I never did a PhD. I uh, have a nephew who is a mathematician, yeah. mathematician Mangold. Uh, uh, he's, he's. You well, still have the diploma. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not only <laughs> he has the diploma, but yeah. he has some important right. discovery. Yeah. Right. So very proud of him, obviously. Yeah. And and I, I was wondering, you know, if there was any connection. Uh, between your interest in mathematics or your background in mathematics and your interest in dance? Mm, I, you know, my interest in dance came by accident. I knew nothing about dance, but I was recommended to Yvonne Rainer, which you saw in my first film, What Maisie Knew, she's the beautiful neck and she's the most charismatic face you have ever seen. And she's a great filmmaker and you probably know some of her film. I know Vincent is teaching... Uh, yeah film about a woman who, which is a film I shot and I edited too, so, but I was, I was recommended to Yvonne in, uh, in December, I think, uh, 71, to, as a camera person who could shoot a movie, she, uh, she wanted to shoot four months later, and I said, my God, I have never seen, a, I had saw a dance, but I understood nothing of what she was doing, so I said, I have to go to a next dance and it was a grand union mm. and it was improvisational because all new york was about improvisation musician theater you know it was very very much photographic theater at the time i was not photographic then my first dance photograph were taken and actually they are kind of interesting uh, in uh, s February 1972, in preparation of that film of Lives of Performer. So I became really absolutely enamored of dance when I went to Rome at Latico Gallery to see the Judson School, if you want, So and also the New York art scene. Latico Gallery is an important gallery which pioneer uh, some uh, installation of uh, um, uh, Smithson, Robert Smithson, in particular the Alpha, uh, the Alpha, uh, Alpha Run, mm -hmm. which is a performance where uh, Smithson uh, damped in a pickup truck uh, hot asphalt uh, from the top of a cliff and uh, 
the the things kind of uh, fall down but cool off in falling down right. so it's a kind of it's definitely a performance you don't know you know it's like me shooting with a camera I have on and off something which I don't know if it's ever going to amount to a film yes, I mean, it's the same thing <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get and what will be the interest of it it's only after the fact yeah so my mathematic background give me a comprehension of science right. and facts you know and mathematics is really grounded you think yeah. it's not but it is and the sense of probability and serendipity yes yeah so i also was you know my english was nil when i arrived when i read the script of ivan i could barely understand the full i had okay. to add the dictionary so i had arrived a year before so i knew 200 words you know 300 words maybe So, but I could observe, and for me it was really important not to be bothered with language, to actually seep into discovering things I had never take time to look at, you know. So I think that generated me as a photographer, mm. and later on as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have questions from the audience? Yes, please. Can you ask, wait for the microphone so that everyone can hear your question? Um, oh, thank you for this treat of the film. Um, the first film, then I can see that you work with the whole designing of the sound, the score for the film. Yes, you have important. this moment, what is like a portrait, is silence, and I believe the film was done with a natural light. Uh, no, I had movie light okay. here and there, but very little. In the apartment we still I needed to have some light, yeah. Un but uh, you have, like, I, I, a lot is shot outdoors, so with no light, yeah, except the sunlight, mm. yeah. And then you have this music. But I worked everything on my own. I had no assistance, so, okay. you know, it was minimal, <laughs> yeah. So did you have a method to do work with the designing of the sound for the... The oh yes, there that? is five sound. There is variation of wind, variation of the piano and the Schumann. There is uh, sound effect. Uh, there is a voice which is Maisie and it's time for supper. So there is practically nothing uh, in terms of voice, but there is some voice. The sound effects are important because they are giving you the sense of the space. Like, for instance, before you see the bathtub and Linda playing with the bathtub, which is in her loft, the loft where you put the, the fog, huh? where you have seen the fog originally, is that place. Uh, you, you, so there was five sounds. There was wind, there was voice, there was sound effect, there was ambience, and there was... Uh, the music. Uh, the 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 Schumann Etude Symphonique, so I wanted to have variation of uh, of amateurish playing of the piano and also a perfect uh, you know recording of it a perfect no but I mean uh, uh, an orchestrator I mean uh, uh, a good quality pianist playing of it which I got from an Amy uh, record obviously. And uh, I had a friend in Paris who is uh, in physics, which is my closest friend. We met when we were in high school. Mm. And uh, she's very important in uh, a long time president of the physics, uh, I don't know how they call it, in France. She was in the lab which got the Nobel Prize in 2001, on top of her game, if you want. But she's very musician, and her first husband was, so they taught me a lot about music and they recommended me when I explained I wanted variation of something and obviously I love Schumann and I love uh, you know 19th century piano music uh, but I could have used other things but they recommended that so I listened to it and I thought it was absolutely perfect yeah and uh, but I shot the film haphazardly you know first it came from the fact that my friend Chantal was going back to France Oh, what, Belgium. In March uh, 1973, and somebody had gave an outdated double X film. And she said, I cannot take that in my suitcase. I already have too much things to take, so take it and make a film with it. And I said, oh my God, I, I don't want to make a film. But actually, I wanted to make a film, so I decided. And I shot the fog. I shot a film with the idea that it will be Maisie, what Maisie knew. The Harry James book is about a little girl, which is 
you know, uh, at the beginning, one or two or three, and at the end of the book, it's five or six. And meanwhile, the parents have had different lovers, and they use the kid as a, as a kind of a, a, a reason for uh, Elisha's, uh, I mean, uh, meeting, you know. So uh, she's just a pawn, basically, in the life of the adult. And uh, the adult, the only thing they want is sex. And the poor girl uh, has nobody to play with, basically. But she obviously look, mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a great subject for me. <laughs> so, so, so Chantal Ackerman is the producer of that film. No, no, no. She's, <laughs> I pay for it. She made it happen. <laughs> she gave me, she gave me the film. And, right, yeah. But I... Uh, uh, it's astonishing. I shot only two hours, and the film is exactly two hours, okay. uh, one hour. Uh -huh. So I shot one to two, which is unheard of. That's I could not believe it. Yeah, the, there was a Hollywood director called William One Shot Bodine because he always yes, took the first take. Exactly. Uh, he was faster than you, but this is uh, yeah, close to a world record. <laughs> <laughs> we have another another question. Hey, yeah. Also, thank you very much. Um, there was one. There was few things, and I like to say us. About maybe you can say something about the way you explore time in that sense of uh, capturing the motion but also extending scenes. Or, um, and also, you choose in the flat, I felt you choose specific objects like the door and kind of not really, really open, but you see that um, maybe something is hiding behind, and the way also the doors also open up one by yeah. one by one. and but the the film was done by sections, so I did first the fog, and there was only woman, and I did uh, the first scene, which is a, uh, a kind of uh, a perfect woman using the leg of Kate Mannheim, which has beautiful leg, the neck of Yvonne, which is extraordinary, the arm of Saskia and Erdekecht, which were the best of my five friends, which were all people I knew very well and I had worked with or I, I was seeing socially, having dinner with or having even conversation with. And uh, afterwards, I said, but there is only a woman, and it's really claustrophobic. And uh, basically, I had a father which died when I was very young, and I was still missing him, you know. So I say, okay, I have to put men in the background. You know, it was feminism, and the men were all, okay, whatever. The idea of having only women was not tenable. So I say, okay, I need to have seen which have men too. So I invented, uh, you know, uh, uh, falling in love and all those couples, which was so part of the... So I designed certain things in relation with the book of Henry James, which I read when I was 16, in French translation, obviously. And then I re read it also in French translation to, to kind of pattern certain element of repetition uh, coming from the book. Uh, and what was the most interesting thing for me to do is the fact the camera was something which is very Ackermanian, actually. <laughs> Les Deux and Chantal used the same uh, low height uh, for Jean Dillman in particular. Uh, you know, uh, because the, the, the look is a little girl who, who standing up is not mm. higher than that. The camera was always on uh, on. Uh, on the baby legs, you know, not on the uh, high boys, basically, not on the standard leg, yeah. So, and, and the people look directly at the camera and are silly, like people, uh, adults are silly in relation with uh, uncritical uh, little child, you know. So I made, I made certain things, but I gave, I, I did not give really direction of Yvonne, you know, or, or whoever, all the people I was working with had a great experience where we work in, 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 in situation like this one where they, they were given uh, some kind of mandate to do certain things, but how they did it was their own business, basically. So uh, that created something very interesting, in particular when I asked them to uh, uh, you know, share secret with each other and touch each other in a way which were covered up by the table and all of that. I was not saying do do this or you do that, but I kind of uh, let them improvise. 
the movement. So I, 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 I captured what was the most cinematically uh, intriguing, you know. They were doing it, and I shot only when, uh, when I felt it was working, yeah. So the, the apartment with door is something that I staged much more because that was the end of the film. And when I had, uh, you know, all this disparate scene, I mean, John coming out of the bushes with Kate and the cemetery and all those things in Central Park and in different uh, venue in Wilton, Connecticut, or the horse with Saskia who is laughing. All of that was done uh, after the fog, but for uh, over a period of one year, and in the fall 74, I say I need something, or in the summer of 74, I say I need something to tie certain things together. And it's then that I uh, uh, really uh, did a three-day shoot in this apartment with the door, which were owned by, uh, which were rented by a friend of mine who was... Uh, 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 it was... Um, he had written a book on uh, 2001, the, the, the film by uh, Stanley Kubrick, but he was not a film critic. He was actually an anthropologist. And uh, I knew him because of that book, but we had conversation also about his own work. And uh, he was at that time living, I think, I don't know what he was teaching. He was starting his teaching career and uh, he lived in this apartment in the Upper West Side, that, that beautiful architecture. So I spent a week there f doing photograph and designing with my still photograph, how I will frame the action. And I did it really like a stage thing. So Jim came over, you know, and got very close, Maisie. Is Ooh, Oops. Exactly what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, very exposed because the person is too close to the mic and so on. So you understand the, 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 that was really orchestrating a space with the action. When before I was not really doing that, you know, I took on Monet because I love his painting. And so I get them going down, uh, uh, you know, uh, a field which has flowers and uh, Kate cannot know how to run. Yvonne uh, is kind of awkward, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, when they ran with the dog and so on. All of that was re reference to painting I like, you know, it was, it was mindless basically. It was not connected to anything except my fancy. But uh, the apartment we still gave uh, uh, cemented the stuff, you know, because it's really organized with the idea that there's that little girl who is behind the door, uh, a, a spy on the, on the blowjob, then Kate is giving to Phil Glass and so on and so on. You see what I mean? I thought that was funny. <laughs> we have time for one more question. Uh, thank you. Um, I was really interested in the gender roles of your first film that you showed today, um, because now you said that it was kind of improvised and that you wanted to have the men in the background. But I was really interested in the body language and in the gender body language, because I thought that the body language of the males was pretty violent uh, compared to the body language of the females, and I wondered if it's in the script or. But I mean, uh, John Herdman was a close friend because he was an actor in uh, uh, two films I had already shot when I put him in that apartment with the film by Yvonne Weiner, and he was a close friend of Yvonne. So many of the people I have in my film are actually people I met through Yvonne Weiner and at work with her. So they had something in common, which was also interesting, because they were at ease with each other and, uh, and they were not asking for, oh, yeah, they were not asking for motivation. They were not actors for the theater, you know, who want to know why I do, do I act that part? I mean, what is the psychology of the character? They were not thinking in terms of character. They were thinking in terms of gesture, which is what the performer is doing and what all my film have been interested in uh, promoting. And actually, it's very much also uh, part of the, of the mantra in the many of the film of Chantal Ackerman, by the way. We share that in common. It's, it was part of, uh, you know, a renewal of the language of uh, what, uh, what people, how people should be shown. You see, we were, we were, we were in, I was invested in that film 
to try to make a film which was image which could be invented only by women and not by men. You see, that's what we wanted to, you know, shed the language of her father. Not that we did not love her father, you see what I mean, or love her boyfriend, but we wanted to invent a new vocabulary. And in many ways, what I love about Trisha Brown is exactly the same thing. Because we discuss, I discuss with her, she was a close friend, we often run into each other, she lives in Seoul, I live in Tribeca, but you know, that world was very small in the 70s, and everybody was still living in New York, you were not so busy, we were always traveling or having to make money abroad, you know. So, uh, in many ways, uh, Trisha wanted to invent new movement. And she also told me that movement is not one movement. It's a phrase. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's the monster, which is the last thing they do in the staging lateral pass, which is the most complicated. And at the end of the film, when they come in front of the scene, and they like that, it's the last image of the film. And it's where the set is the lowest, and therefore they're most at, most at risk, you know. So this idea of, uh, of, uh, of a phrase of movement, of a scene which is made of a phrase, I had never conceptualized that before. You know, I always thought movement was structure, like ballet, which I also knew, because obviously, uh, you know, when you start to like to look at something, dance and people moving, you try every kind of uh, form of movement and you experiment with them. I never shot ballet, but, uh, you know, because I don't think it's as interesting than modern dance, really, because it's too predictable. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you very much for the films, uh, for the generous Q&A. We take a short break of maybe 15 minutes, and then we continue the discussion with your presentation of uh, uh, Pina Bausch uh, Adi by Chantal Ackermann. So please return after the break. And thank you again, uh, Babette, for thank coming you, here and for giving us thank those films. Thank you for your question. Uh, if you are interested about the film, uh, uh, I have a website, which I, I write, you know, in English, obviously, because I live in the English world now since 1970. Uh, so I write uh, uh, on my website uh, on my film. So most of the clips are disabled now, unfortunately, but uh, you still have some some of the insight about the making of the film. And I have also a book published by Sternberg Press, which is about my writing. So there I don't speak of my film. Uh, I don't speak only about film, but I have you know, important essay on film history, on the shift to digital, on uh, on my relationship with the subject I photograph. I mean, it's very varied, so if you're interested, uh, you can buy the book. I don't think it costs much money. It's lovely. It's about that thick. It's about that big. You know, it's very small. You can keep it in your pocket. It's in your pocket. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you.